Ho ho boys, welcome to Borderline Games. I'm Gareth and this is Chrono Jotter episode 8. Uh, what happened last time? Uh, we investigated the dorms, talking to all the students before going to bed. Most seemed interested in mainly flirting with us, it seemed like, but uh, whatever. Uh, we then went to sleep and were woken up by a weird, eldritch horror. Except it seemed to speak to Van's alter personality rather than um, us ourselves. The weird personality were... Ran's um, sprite goes kind of black and white and she starts talking more aggressively. Um, I think it was talking to that personality as opposed to Ran, whoever that is. Um, the scene was really weird and asks more questions than answered, so let's just continue and see if we get some answers. Ran opened her eyes. Gentle sunlight illuminated the whole dormitory, but she immediately shut her eyes again, rejecting the comforting light. Here it is again. My eyes hurt so much. Ran closed her eyes shut, squeezing a few tears out of her, co out of her corners and tried to raise her right hand. I can't raise it. Fine then. She relaxed completely focusing only on keeping her thoughts active. Whenever I took command of her body after she fell asleep, Ran always woke afterwards with sore eyes and delayed nervous reaction speeds. This usually lasted around 10 or so minutes. Might as well think about what I'm going to do today while I'm recuperating. The murder has yet to take place. And the class president said that last time was a particularly quick case. Probably the usual pace is much slower. Not only uh, will there be all kinds of personal matters getting in the way, but they'll probably also need to spend some time figuring out a method and then wait for the right opportunity. Give me one second, I'm going to sort out whatever is troubling Hagrid right now. What's up? You okay, Hagrid? And until they do... They'll have to go about their normal lives at the school. I guess I'll go to the classroom and see what their lessons are like after this. If it's Miss Sakura lecturing today, lecturing today, I'd love it if she punished me by making me stand in the corner. Weird. After that, once lunch is over, I can go check out the tunnel. The situation yesterday was rather unique. I didn't have the chance to investigate it in detail. I'll take a good look today and estimate whether it's all feasible, whether it's at all feasible to dig through the collapsed tunnel by hand. Maybe there's something in the tool uh, closet I checked out last night that could help me with the uh, excavation. And after that, Ran rolled over. She felt that she would be able to fully recover soon. The class president. I don't know why she had to confess to me. Oh yeah, she confessed something, but I've forgotten what it was already. Uh, I just hope Miss Sakura uh, won't come to any misunderstandings. Was it um, her love for her? Is that why... Um... Yeah, I think it was. I think she like confessed her feelings for Ran, right? Is that right? Ten minutes passed quickly. Ran sat at the side of the bed and raised her head. The top bunk bed was already neatly made. She frowned slightly and groped for her phone on the bed. The display showed that it was half past eight. Just in time to head to the classroom. Let's go. LFG gamers. Okay, back to the classroom. Oi, Ibuki, you're late. You never had any intentions of calling me to come to class at all, did you? Classes had just let out, and though there weren't many students, the sounds of the piecemeal chit-chat captured Ran's ears and pulled her back into her recollections. Uh, Asakura-san, it seems like it's going to rain today. Will we still be going to the library this afternoon? Uh, let's just stay in the dorms instead. Didn't you want to go get some math tutoring from Takai-san anyway? In the classroom of her memory, the sound of the end of class bell had been as like a signal gun. 
letting the students know that it was time to charge past the starting line of discipline and rush out together, hand in hand, down the racetrack named Laughter. Quite poetic. Mm-hmm. Takeo-san, are you free this afternoon? Uh, is what, whatever her name is, said. Uh, leaving only Van behind. Nobody would ever. And then, I still don't fully understand what we went over last time. Why are you just standing there like a dummy again? Don't tell me you skipped breakfast. I left a portion of food for you in the dining hall. Don't tell me you missed it. And then... Sure. I'm available. I'll see you later then. Asakura-san? Asakura-san? That's how you say it. Can come as well. Van suddenly raised her head. Sai was standing next to her, watching her with a light frown. Let's just have Tama visit you on her own. I'd like to be able f uh, I'd like to be alone for a while. Oh yeah, I saw them. The milk and cookies, right? They were pretty good. It's hard to keep track of. Alright, okay, cool. No more. Van-chan, what took you so long? Aya circled around to Ran's back and laid her hands onto Ran's shoulders. You missed my chemistry lecture. What? You're responsible for chemistry classes at the school. I guess self-teaching is the only hope we have then. I mean, we already knew that, didn't we? Rude. Can you believe how rude that was of her? Oh, I see. She literally just means learning yourself as opposed to them teaching themselves as a group. Laughing, Aya took Ran's shoulders, uh, shook Ran's uh, shoulders back and forth. On the other side, Koizumi had approached as well. Uh, good morning, Gabuki-san. Morning. Ran wasn't certain whether Koizumi had told anyone else about her confession. Most importantly, Ran looked all over the room searching for Ann Sakura. Ran found her at the back blackboard where Ann was preparing an outline for the, the next class on the blackboard, with a book in her hand. The next period is Miss Sakura's language class, then. As Ran thought of this, the bell rang in a hurry, signal, signal, signaling the start of the class. Hey, Ibuki. You don't have any textbooks on hand, do you? Come on, push your desk over. We'll share. Ran nodded and took a seat next to Sai. Teaching the language uh, class suits Miss Sakura quite well. Though I'm sure she could teach any subject well. I can't believe I get to see Miss Sakura as a school teacher. That's Miss Sakura for you. She hides, uh, she hides countless possibilities. Alright, oh, simp. Thinking about Miss Sakura, Ran couldn't help but start to giggle. Abuki, what the hell? Gross. Uh, oh, nothing. What? Did she say that out loud? Is that what it was? 45 minutes passed in the blink of an eye. And only when the bell rang again at the end of the class did Ran come back to her senses. It's over. Ran laid down the hand she was using to support her head and leaned back on the chair's back. Anne Sakura's class had been a bit underwhelming. Oops. I can't believe how ordinary that was. Is that really how Sakura would act if she became a teacher? Anne had taught the class as uh, if she were a young graduate who'd just become the newest intern at the school with a completely ordinary lecture. But back when Ran had asked for tutoring from Anne in the past, her lover had been completely different and far more expressive. She'd be more expressive back then, making weird gesticulations and even weirder metaphors. Anne would even use the strangest comparison to help Ran understand her points. That was probably because Miss Sakura and I were tutoring one on uh, one, on one, I guess. She would even hug my waist with one arm while writing solutions on the paper with the other two. Ran's gaze was still locked on Anne, who was approaching her. The current Miss Sakura isn't the one who knows how to cherish me anymore. Ran's hands clenched into tight fists underneath the table. It's fine. It's fine, Miss Sakura will remember it all. I'll help her remember. Calm. Stay calm. Alright. 
a bit intense. How was my lesson, Ran? Were you able to take it all in? I was mostly just staring at you. I didn't really pay attention to the content of the lecture. Holy shit, you need to get a room. I swear, you're almost on Asakura's level. I was only speaking the truth. I don't see any reason to be embarrassed about that. Anne smiled awkwardly, looking a bit lonely. Well, next time I give a lecture, you better listen attentively, or else I'll make you stand in the corner. Okay, <laughs> that's exactly what she wanted. Uh, now that sounded a bit like her old self. Though, I probably don't need to attend class after this. As far as their classes go, there's nothing special about them besides how they have student service teachers. I probably can't get any more useful clues from here. After that, the next two periods are both in Arta's maths classes. The class president's math class. Hearing Kurazumi's name come out of Anne's mouth, Ran panicked for a moment and parroted Anne's words back at her. What does Miss Sakura mean by this? Has the class president told her about it? Is Miss Sakura about to interrogate me about it now? By then, Kurazumi had already wiped off the remains of Anne's lecture on the, on the blackboard and begun writing math formulas there instead. Ran's eyes couldn't help but drift towards her. Koizumi held the textbook with her left hand, as the stick of chalk in her right hand uh, danced swiftly across the blackboard. From time to time, she stood on tiptoes to reach the top of the board. Apparently, she'd finished transcribing the page she was on because Koizumi gave her right hand's middle finger a quick lick before she used it to flip the next page. Hmm? Oh, she's using her index and thumb to hold the chalk. Koizumi realized that Ram was looking at her and started a little bit, oh, and startled a little bit before she quickly hid her right hand behind herself. Then she gave Ran an awkward smile and continued her writing on the blackboard. Something going on with Hinata? Uh, nothing. I just, it was just the thought, I thought that she and Takai looked the most suitable to be school teachers, so. Please don't come to any misunderstand uh, misunderstandings, Miss Sakura. The only person that I like is you. I couldn't possibly have any feelings for anybody else. Mm, putting on a bit strong. Well, I mean, actually, I'd love it if you paid other people a bit more attention. Your life can't be completely dependent on just me, can it? Well said. Those words caused Ran's eyes to involuntarily widen. Shaking her head, she raised her hand to shield her face and spoke with a dark voice from behind it. Miss Sakura. You would never have said anything like that if you hadn't lost your memories. She's been weird. My life is something that I only want to spend with you. I don't need anything else. Okay. <laughs> what do you plan on doing this afternoon, Ibuki-san? Ran chewed slowly on a mouthful of uh, conch. What the hell is that? Thinking about how she'd like to answer. Ah. <sighs> Why is the class president asking again? Miss Sakura's right next to me. Let's just fend her off quickly. Ran swallowed the savoury conch before she answered. I'm going to check out the tunnel. Really? Then I'll come along too. Kuzumi laid her chopsticks down and pressed the fingers on of her hands together. We can go around uh, three in the afternoon. I can prepare some tea and snacks. Huh? Is that really necessary? It's not that far away. I think it's a splendid idea. Kuzumi's pastries are always quite delicious. An opportunity. Then, would you like to come as well, Miss Sakura? Oh no. Kuzumi invited you, not me. I shouldn't intrude. You two enjoy yourselves. It's fine. If Ibuki-san wants to go with Sakura-san, I can prepare the biscuits and pastries for the two of you to take instead. That'd be wonderful. Yes, let's do that. Ran. Anne turned and stared at Ran, and the feeling of being watched by Anne was enough to fill Ran's heart with pleasure. It's back. The feeling of the old Miss Sakura shining through again. 
God, she's horrible. She's like obsessing over and it's really gross. Okay, I got it. I'll come to your room at three in the, mo in the afternoon to meet up with you, class president. Hearing Ran assent, Koizumi's eyes lit up for a moment before they lowered again. If possible, could we meet by the entryway to the dormitory itself? Why? The rooms are so close together. Why can't we just go downstairs together? Um, okay, I guess. Koizumi's attitude displeased Ran greatly. No, I asked you why. You can go ahead and tell me why. You don't just have to roll over and be all or be all like, okay. <laughs> Koizumi shook her head. It's nothing, just a personal problem. Well, if she says it that way, then I guess I have to accommodate her. Huh? Whatever. Mr. Kuro is here. It's not a big deal anyway. Let's just go along with what Koizumi wants. Fine. Dormitory entrance by three o'clock, then. It's settled. Ran's quick change in attitude cheered Koizumi greatly, and she gave a, a wide smile. Okay, thank you, Ibuki-san. I got interrupted last time by her confession. This time, let's ask her a bit more about Mr. Kura. Alright, so is that what we're going to do now? The air was somewhat stifling. Ran raised her head to look up at the cloudless sky. She'd come to the dormitory entrance, uh, entrance at exactly the uh, appointed hour in order to avoid opening her room door and running into Koizumi immediately. I really expected her to show up before I did. Only after five minutes had passed did Koizumi push open the dormitory door and appear before Ran. She planned to kill her. Oh, is that why? Is, uh, has Koizumi trying to get Ran on her own, on, on her own so that she can kill her? Because she drew a, um, if you, if you knew here, they drew, they draw lots, um, and then they kill each other and then they, uh, solve it. And then the people that have died get brought back to life. It's weird. But I think maybe she's planning to kill Ran. Maybe she carried a picnic box and an umbrella in her hand. Sorry to keep you waiting, Ibuki-san. I'd already finished preparing when I remembered that it might rain. So I went back and got an umbrella. Though it doesn't rain much here. Whenever it rains, it always tends to rain for days on end. It's fine. I just arrived, too. The class president asked to meet at the dormitory door just to deliver a line like that. Ran quickly added a clarification. I mean it. I really did only just arrive. Haven't waited long at all. Oh. Forget it. Let's just go. Okay. Ran turned and headed directly for the school gates. She slowed her pace down a bit so that Koizumi couldn't keep uh, could keep up, and the two of them advanced side by side. This sudden like drop in the music is kind of disturbing sometimes. Uh, this time, as they headed towards the tunnel at a normal walking speed, Ran realized that the road was actually quite long. She must have caused Anne a lot of pain last time, when she dragged her at a running pace in the rain down the whole road's length. Miss Sakura didn't even get mad with me, though. I should apologize to her again, once we get back. Ran headed right into the tunnel, and the light dimmed immediately. She turned on the flashlight on her phone, but the light was too weak, and insufficient to light the path ahead. Well... That's a problem. Just then, a bright light suddenly appeared from behind her. Ran turned her head and saw that Koizumi was carrying a flashlight. Well prepared, aren't you? Um, well, I was hoping I could help you, Abuki-san. So I made a lot of considerations while packing. Ran heard confidence from Koizumi's voice. She didn't like it. Look, class rep, I really like Miss Sakura. Like, imagine the most uh, you think a person can possibly love another person and multiply that by, like, 10,000. <laughs> Ran reached the end of the tunnel, where the rocks 
obstructed the path forward. So, I really think that you should give up on me. Don't worry about me, Ibuki-san. I'm only doing what I want to do. You don't need to feel burdened at all. Ran took the flashlight from Kuizumi, uh, that Kuizumi was handing to her and pointed it down at the floor as the two of them looked at each other. It's already become a burden to me. And Miss Sakura seemed to be very concerned about you more than she, than she is for me. I'm sorry, Ibuki-san. Kawazumi hesitated a few moments before speaking again. Sorry. Ran didn't want to hear her repetitive apologies. She turned around and pointed the flashlight at the rocks. It doesn't look particularly special. Ran put a hand on the rock, feeling a wet sensation in her hands. Lichen. Okay, we're not being told what that means. Uh, Ran swung the flashlight around, identifying a loose chunk of rock stuck in the middle of the pile, close to falling. She raised her head and carefully inspected the area around the stone. Probably can dig this one out without collapsing anything else. Come up here and hold, uh, and hold the flashlight for me, class rep. Koizumi stepped forward quickly and helped Ran illuminate the pile of rocks. After that, Ran reached out and took hold of the rock wedged in the crack. You need me to help? No need. Just holding the flashlight will be enough. The rock was wedged in tightly. Ran used all the strength she had, but even when it only caused the rock to scrape back and forth within the crack against the other rocks, grinding irritantly, uh, irritatingly as, she, as it did so, Ran gave up on pulling the rock out directly and rather pushed it to the left instead. The lichen on the rock pressed into the lichen in the crack and accompanied by the uh, the sound of flowing water, the, sto the stone showed clear signs of loosening. Oh, okay. Excellent. Oops. <laughs> I keep on uh, catching my uh, mouse wheel, sorry about that. Uh, Ran grabbed the, uh, the, grabbed the rock once again. With her feet to the ground and her shoulders low set. Uh, she gave it a pull with both hands and with a series of cracks the rock came free from the stubborn crevice. The momentum of it caused Ran to stumble several steps backwards, still holding the stone. Seeing it, Koizumi quickly stepped up and caught Ran. Ibuki-san! Uh, I'm okay. Managed to get out. Get it out. Uh, Ran's hands trembled slightly as she carried the boulder. Flashlight. Shine a light down that crack, will you? Kawazumi nodded and pointed the light towards the scene of Ran's struggles for the past few minutes. Behind the crack, there were even more layers of broken stone, no different from the rest. Ran, taking a few deep breaths, headed out of the tunnel. Koizumi immediately followed, helping to illuminate the path for her. When they reached the exit of the tunnel, Ran stopped and tossed the rock out of the tunnel. The rock landed into the ground, onto the ground, and rocked back and forth a bit for momentum before falling still. Hmm, it hasn't transformed after, even after leaving the tunnel. Ran stepped out of the tunnel and took a look under the light of the sun. The bits of wet lichen uh, still stuck to her hands. What is the word lichen? A complex life form that is a symbiotic partnership of two separate organisms, a fungus and an algae. Oh, okay. Right, and it's on rocks normally. It's normally on rocks that are wet. Okay, cool. Just so I know what we're talking about. As and the light was real too. It hasn't vanished just because it was removed from the tunnel. A few raindrops landed in Ran's palm. Ran looked up at the rain clouds gathering over them in the sky before returning her thoughts to the tunnel. So the problem isn't with the tunnel itself. Perhaps the school and the nearby foot accessible area are both considered one unitary whole. 
Let's go over the ano uh, anomalies again. Firstly, nobody is concerned about clearly being unable to leave here. Some kind of cognito hazard. Indefinitely available uh, necessities for, ev uh, for everyday life. Maintaining the stability of the environment. And of course the murder game where revival is possible. Let's assume that that's the purpose for which we've been brought here. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've got it. Cognitive disruption. A closed but stable environment. And certain strange and distinct rules. I've encountered many supernatural phenomena like this before. The true mastermind probably wants to see us murder each other back and forth. The question is where this being is and why it selected us in particular. Ran shook the light chin off of her hand and looked to her side to see Koizumi diligently holding an umbrella up for the two of them. Are you planning to clear out the rocks in the tunnel by yourself, Abuki-san? Nah. There's way too many to move without serious excavation tools or time. Not to mention I haven't even got uh, Miss Sakura's memories back. I've at least got to figure that out before I leave. That's right. If it's the same type of anomaly as the Red Ruins, then I haven't the foggiest why the rules that have caused Miss Sakura to lose her memories. Okay, let's have a look at this Red Ruins thing. Oh, okay. Can I click on it? Yes, I can. Uh, term, is it in? No. Here? No. Recall log. No. Notes. Back. It's not, obviously it's not going to be in that. Maybe it was here? No. It's definitely not there. Okay. Well, that's a mystery. Recorded the term? Maybe it just hasn't... Am I being blind? Recall... It's definitely not there, is it? Oh! Idiot. Okay. A region situated in the far eastern reaches of Russia with an area of approximately 6.6 .6 square kilometers. Humans who enter the area will be, will be compared, uh, compelled by certain rules. Details of which are unclear due to Rand's memory loss. Uh, to participate in a certain activity. Okay. After 12 days pass, all participants will depart the ruins uninjured. However, their personalities will become drastically altered. And they will from then on behave in a way that is consistent with common behaviors displayed by average adult citizens of the Soviet Union in the 1960s. Furthermore, they will now loudly broadcast their new beliefs and manifesto in public gathering spaces. Ranabuki once entered these ruins, but escaped from them after only one day. She experienced no alterations to her personality. Well, I beg to differ. Uh, because if it's part of the rules that this place operates under, then all of us should have lost our memories. Even I've only forgotten who it was, how it was I got here. Oh, I see. She's saying that she still has a memory, so it's not this red ruins thing. There's still a different path here, though. Let's uh, let's keep going and see where it leads. The raindrops fell with increasing density, and the rain grew heavy, but it didn't deter Ran from deciding to press for uh, press uh, onwards. Ran walked to the edge of the path and stuck her head out, inspecting the cliff beneath. It wasn't very tall, just five or six meters high, with a grove of bushes underneath. Beyond was dense. Uh, and unending forest. Even in the worst case scenario, if I slipped and fell, I probably wouldn't sustain any injuries as long as I slid down uh, the incline. Let's keep going. Rand stepped onto the path, which was only wide enough for one person at a time. She pressed her left hand to the side of the mountain and slowly uh, creeped forward. Uh, Ibuki. Kozumi seemed afraid that She'd scared Ran if she shouted too loudly, so she closed her mouth and followed behind Ran. The rain grew heavier and heavier. Ran couldn't help but constantly blink her eyes. She felt like with every step she took, the road in front of her became thinner and thinner. 
this is far enough for now. There was a sharp left turn in the path ahead with a tunnel turned the other way. It was very difficult to push through this bend in the storm, so Ran decided to turn back. She turned around to discover Koizumi was still following her. Class Rep, what are you doing following me up here? I was... worried. Are you an idiot? This road's only wide enough for one person. Now that you're in the way, how are we supposed to get back? Uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll turn around immediately. Wait! I'm sorry. I shouldn't have yelled at you. Don't rush yourself. Make sure you turn around slowly and carefully. I'm not angry with you. Uh, okay. Kozumi nodded as uh, she took hold of a protruding rock. Extending her right foot behind her, she slowly began the difficult process of turning herself around, alternating which hand she was using to hold onto the rock as she turned. Ran for her part, quickly turned around and uh, came to Koizumi's side, and raised her left hand to make sure she didn't fall. Her actions caused noticeable tension in Koizumi, and she tightened her grip on the rock in response. But the conical surface of the stone was slippery with rainwater and her hand slipped off, oh no. Losing her balance, Koizumi tilted backwards. Ran immediately leapt forward, trying to grab Koizumi's clothes, but she missed. Ibuki! Without thinking, Koizumi instinctively reached out. Ran acted before her brain could fully process the situation as well and grabbed her hand immediately. Wait, I can't take that hand. The moment that thought appeared to her, Ran was dragged off the cliff herself along with Koizumi. Oh my god. Ran got up from the ground, dusted her clothes off a bit and looked up. Above was the path the two of them had just fallen from. Good thing it wasn't too high. Can't believe we actually fell down. I'm sorry, Ibuki-san. Koizumi was sitting on the ground, crying terribly. She wiped her face ceaselessly as the rain and tears... Uh, together turned her eyes red. The picnic box and the now badly bent umbrella had landed near her left leg. Her pants had been torn in half and her scraped thigh was exposed to the air. Ibuki-san. I'm sorry, what do we do? I shouldn't have tried to catch her. Back then, I should have gone back to the school and called for help. Can't be helped now. Let's calm uh, the class president down first. Feels like the class president's always taking a fall. Huh. Ran approached Kurazumi's side and stretched her hand out. Come on, let's calm down so we can stand up and find a place to hide from the rain. Kurazumi wiped her tears with one hand and took Ran's with the other. Ran pulled her up, putting some force into it after Kurazumi got up. She immediately collapsed into Ran's lap. What's wrong? Can't stand up straight. Koizumi shook her head, smiling wi uh, wryly through the rain. I'm fine. You don't need to worry. Looks like she's got a sprain. In that case, we probably shouldn't move about too much. Let's go hide from the rain under that tree. And then we can call for help from our classmates. Ran supported Koizumi to the side of the tree and had her lean against it to rest while she retrieved the picnic box and umbrella. There's some cloth in the box that we can lay at the ground. Hmm. Got it. Ran laid the picnic cloth flat on the ground. The leaves and branches above the two of them shielded them from the wind and rain, creating a, a little shelter for them. It's a shame that the umbrella's broken, otherwise we could have mounted it to the branches and to help block the rain. Let's sit down and rest a bit, class president. Okay. I'm sorry. Koizumi sat down on the tablecloth, 
Pressing herself close to Ran, she began trying to clean her long, wet hair by hand. Did you bring your phone? I yes. Koizumi took her phone out of a pocket of her skirt, but the fall had bent her smartphone into a flip phone. Aye. Koizumi started crying again. Come on. It's okay, don't cry, it's not a big problem. Look, you mentioned that we were going to the tunnel back at lunch. In the worst case scenario, they'll notice that we're not back in time for dinner, and they'll come out here to look for us. Mr. Kura's quite clever, you know. I'm sure she won't take long to figure out that we slipped off the side of the path in the rain. Koizumi, still crying, nodded her head. Her mood didn't seem to seem like it, it had particularly improved. Okay, let's maybe try something else. As Ran thought to herself, the thought came to her that the sounds of the rain and the whistling of the wind were actually quite lovely. As she watched the raindrops uh, leave perfect ripples in the puddles and listened to the leaves rustle softly in the wind, time seemed to slow for her. I've been running here and there non-stop, doing this and that. Feels like this is the first time I've encountered something I can't do anything about, but all I can do is wait. Honestly, even though this is technically a disaster, it's kind of relaxing. Ran lowered her head and shoulders and her breathing grew calm. She enjoyed a rare moment of rest. Koizumi, noticing Ran's change of disposition, slowly stopped crying as well and turned to face her. You know, class president, it's a good thing you prepared so thoroughly. Because of that, our situation's not as bad as it could have been. Koizumi raised her head, her puffy red eyes making her look even more vulnerable than usual. We've got a place to hide from the rain, and a tablecloth to sit in. Sit on. There's tea and biscuits in the lunchbox too, right? It's practically a real picnic. Thank you, Ibuki-san. I wish I could be as calm as you. Kozumi was trying her best not to waste Ran's efforts to cheer her up. She did her best to smile, and wiped her tears away with her fingers. Well, that's all thanks to Miss Sakura, really. I was a lot worse when, uh, before I met her. Before that, I'd have probably been crying even harder than you are right now. Really? <laughs> I can't imagine at that, Abuki-san. Kozumi stopped speaking. Ran supposed, uh, Ran supposed she must have remembered, uh, suddenly remembered the image of Ran grabbing Anne from the, uh, the old shower room and dragging her into the run, running, uh, let's start again. Ran supposed she must have suddenly remembered the image of Ran grabbing Anne from the old shower room and dragging her into a run, dragging her, dragging her into running away together. Okay. It was probably easy to imagine Ran, uh, crying her eyes out with that context. But even though you may have been influenced and changed by Sakura-san, you're still able to make the choices that you yourself want. I'm so jealous of that, really. What's that mean? I don't get it. Ever since I was young, everything in my life was already fully decided by my parents. The elementary school and middle school I went to were both places where they had connections. What I, re uh, what I used on a daily basis and what I did on a daily basis... Uh, daily basis uh, they dict dictated pretty much all of it i never had a chance to decide anything for myself same with this high school really i didn't want to come here originally but they still sent me here anyways well ignoring the class president's feeling feelings for a moment it's very important that she actually has an understanding of what a normal school ought to be like and more importantly that she remembers just how she wound up in this place the situation has changed a bit again Though, I've gotten on quite well with everyone, and I've already gotten used to having my choices made for me. I feel like you're making a mountain of a molehill, molehill here. Plenty of people have their choices made by their parents for them, from their childhood to their adulthood. Ranabuki made a concerted effort to not let her own memories of her parents appear in the middle of this conversation. She deliberately pushed them out of her thoughts for a moment. I have Miss Sakura. I only have Miss Sakura. 
Besides class rep, you've surely got the ability to make decisions on your own as well. You chose where to sleep and what to eat and how much to eat every day, right? Koizumi smiled wryly again. <laughs> Indeed. Since I left my parents and came here, I've been I've become capable of deciding all these things on my own. The way Kurazumi said that sent a chill down Ran's spine. As if some stray raindrops had finally landed and penetrated through to her back. Though they told me to become a teacher after I graduated, even though I'd much rather become a reporter. Well, teaching seems uh, like it'd suit you. I'm a bit surprised you want to become a reporter, actually. I feel like you'd be more suited for a sedentary job. Your parents plan for you honestly. Their plans for you honestly aren't that awful. Koizumi hugged her knees, shrinking down into a little ball. But I've been ruled by all these not awful things my whole life. Even though I didn't like them, I could never come up with a good reason to refuse them, and so I could never refuse them at all. Why would you need a reason to refuse? Just say you don't want to. I don't know. But I always feel like I should oblige any request that anyone makes of me. Like becoming the class president, really. Like I said, would be much more suitable. But the class selected me for some reason. So all I can do is try to do my best in the position. After Karazumi finished speaking, Ran found that she wasn't quite sure how to respond. She wasn't very good at dealing with personal problems like this. If there was a specific issue to resolve, she might have been able to contribute more. The rain fell harder and harder, showing no signs of abating. And eventually, there was only the ca uh, cacophonous sound of the downpour between the two of them. Ibuki-san. Kuizumi uh, broke the silence first. Even though I recently just talked about how I'm always forced to make decisions by others, this time, I chose of my own volition to confess to you, Ibuki-san. To be this close to you. Right now. I'm very happy about that. Maybe this will help boost my self-confidence. Well, you've definitely come to the wrong person. I definitely can't help you with that. I'm as far from confident as you can get. All of my decisions are rooted in Miss Sakura. They certainly are. Then, Ibuki-san, can you become the source of my confidence then? Kuizumi's feelings for her had far surpassed Ran's expectations. It felt... It left her confused about why exactly Kuizumi would be so fixated upon her. No way. That's not something that I'm capable of. Kuizumi nervously clutched her hands tight. I'm sorry. I'm acting like my parents trying to force you to do something you don't want to do. What, so the class president clearly knows I'm not interested? Why is she still trying then? It's okay. These are totally different things anyways. Right now I'm more worried about when exactly we're going to be, when they're going to come and save us. I don't want to miss Yuruno's dinner. Then let's drink some tea while we wait. Well, now we're really having a camping experience then. Smiling, Karazumi extracted a thermos from the lunchbox and poured Ran and herself each a cup of tea. Alright, I think I've successfully helped the class uh, rep Relax. Time to ask her about Miss Sakura. Right. Class rep, when you saw Miss Sakura for the first time, what kind of condition was she in? Sakura-san, huh? Koizumi thought as she looked at out the plastic box holding the biscuits. Oh, she took it out. I first encountered her in the dorm room. Sakura-san seemed quite normal to me. She was sitting by the window, and after she saw me, she waved hello to me first. But then when I asked her about her name, it turned out she didn't even remember it. She told me that she uh, saw all the other rooms had people in them already, so she decided to wait here. Ah, Abuki-san, you should try this ch uh, chocolate cookie. <laughs> oh, thank you. What happened after that? Ran drank some tea to go with the chocolate biscuit. It's, crypt uh, it's crisp texture and the way that the bitterness of the tea and the sweetness of the biscuit mixed together caused Ran to take another bite despite herself. Well, there was a registration sheet on the table on the first floor of the dorms, which told us who was assigned to which door room. Sakura-san said that she was waiting for me to arrive, so that she could determine by method of elimination whether her name was Hinata Koizumi 
or Anne Sakura. That's Miss Sakura for you. She's never panicked before in her life and probably never will. I think she definitely panicked a bit when you dragged her out of the shower room kicking and screaming. Yeah. The class president was a re has a real talent for snarking, huh? And to think she imagines that she's just indecisive. Well, once we got to the tunnel, Miss Sakura definitely calmed back down and then led me back to the school with just a few words. Honestly, the other students and I are all very curious what you two have been through together. The passion that you express for Sakura-san seems to be quite different from that of ordinary love. That's because it is different from ordinary love. Just saying I love you doesn't begin to express the way I feel about Miss Sakura in my heart. Koizumi poured Ran another cup of tea. If it's possible, could you tell me a little bit about the two of you? Well, strange. I would never be willing to talk about Miss Sakura in front of most people, but when I face the class rep, it doesn't feel like such a big deal anymore. Sure. Give me a second to think about what I, uh, about what to say. Ran described a few uneventful snippets of her regular life with Anne to Kurizumi. Even so, Kurizumi still listened attentively and occasionally let out a laugh. Ran didn't care whether the romantic stories she was telling Kurizumi would hurt her uh, unreciprocated feelings either. Just being able to go over her happy memories with Anne Sakura again was a great comfort to Ran as well. Time passed quietly, and the two of them didn't even notice when the rain had stopped only coming back to the senses when they ha had heard some voices calling out from afar. And then Miss Sakura... Hang on, do you hear that? Oh, yes! Koizumi nodded vigorously. I hear it! I think it's Yorona san! Took him long enough. Let's go! Can't believe I actually enjoyed the conversation, class rep. <laughs> That's a weird thing to just say to her. I'm glad that you enjoyed it, Buki san. I'm happy too. Koizumi stood up. The clear light of the sun after the, st after the storm shone upon her, and Ran saw her smile as if she'd uh, put all of her burdens down. Oh. Ibuki-san, once I graduate, I'll definitely tell my parents. I'll tell them that I don't want to be a teacher. This time I'm sure I'll be able to tell them properly because I've got Ibuki. Kozumi's words pierced through Ran's brain. A pain unlike any she'd ever suffered before. Uh... Oh, I see. A pain unlike any she'd ever suffered before took over her whole consciousness. W what? Ran knelt on the floor and fought to catch her breath. The sound of her breathing was so loud, her ears rang. Koizumi, Hinata. Ranabuki opened her mouth as though that would allow the pain inside her skull to stream out. Abuki san! Koizumi seemed terrified as well. She knelt down beside Ran without any idea what to do. Abuki san! Koizumi, you're... this... Everything before Ran began to twist and distort before finally fading into infinite darkness. Whoa. As, dis as distant as Ran Ibuki was from other people, even she knew full well what the math teacher Hinata Kazumi was... Uh, hang on. That the math teacher was the kind of person who was accustomed to giving away... giving way to the desires of others. Someone whose first response was always appeasement. Other teachers frequently foisted off the work they didn't want to do themselves onto Kurizumi. Like she was garbage, a garbage can without a lid, into which you could shove any kind of trash. One day Ran found Kurizumi crying by herself in a rarely visited corner of the school. She asked the teacher, even after growing up, is finding a hidden place to cry all alone any uh, cry? Hang what? Even after growing up, is finding a hidden place to cry all anyone can do? Koizumi Hinata was pained by these words. She knew the situation that Ranabuki had been in at school, but she'd never paid particular attention to it. After all, nobody had requested that she do so. 
So she started trying to help Ranabuki. This was the first time in her life that had been completely decided by her parents that she'd made uh, what felt to her like a meaningful decision. So is this something that's been forgotten about? This is how their relationship... This is a point in her... So she knew them before this event, I'm guessing. I'm guessing? Right? Same thing that makes sense. After that, the two of them often met in a corner of the school to chat about anything and everything. Ran had also noticed that this teacher seemed to care greatly about her. Even on its own, such a thing was a great aid to Ran. Later, Ran met Anne Sakura and became more and more, out, uh, more and more outgoing. Koizumi was happy to see such a change in Ran as well. Koizumi uh, gained great encouragement from witnessing Ran's transformation. She told Ran that she was going to make a change as well. That she would open her mouth for the first time to reject her parents' demands of her. Ibuki-san, I'm definitely going to tell my parents that I don't want to be a teacher and that I don't want to get married either. But starting the day after Koizumi expressed her determination, she never came back to school ever again. It didn't take long for the students to be informed that Koizumi had left her position due to getting married. Oh, that's sad. For a while, the rumour mill went uh, wild with this. Some people whispered that she'd gotten pregnant out of wedlock and been fired for it. Others suggested that uh, she was a, se a sexually promiscuous person. The students and teachers alike began to scrutinise uh, Koizumi's previous actions in detail to find each and every fault in them. Even small issues uh, that hadn't been worth discussing before had become evidence in support of Hinata Kurizomi's obvious moral ling uh, iniquity? Iniquity? Obvious moral iniquity. Ranabuki was surrounded in these disgusting rumours. These statements targeting, uh, targeted at Kurizumi pained her own heart as well. She imagined the things that Koizumi must have experienced after defying her parents for the first time. Ran wanted to fight against the rumours for Koizumi's sake, to eliminate the false rumours that plagued the school, but she couldn't open her mouth. Ran hid herself in the secluded place, where she'd meet with Koizumi each day, crying and dry heaving. Jesus. Ran knew that she, like Koizumi Hinata, had the exact same lack of ability to make independent decisions. If she foolishly decided to try to make a difference, she would only invite destruction down to us, down on herself. Which was why Ansakura had to be by her side. If she was ever to decide to, or change anything. Wow, okay. Ran freed herself from her memories. She'd remembered everything about Koizumi now. Ibuki-san. Kuizumi tried to help Ran stand up, but Ran's body seemed to have sunken into the ground. She couldn't move Ran at all. It's fine. Kuizumi sen sai. I'm sorry. I'm I'm so sorry. Buki san, what are you saying? I can't hear you clearly. Ran trembled as she looked up at the high school version of Kuizumi. So, in the end, Kuizumi. Senzai was still unable to refuse her parents' demand that she become a teacher after graduating from high school, just like how she was forced to get married after coming to age anyways. Uh, I'm fine, Koizumi. Okay. Koizumi still seemed quite confused. She must have been wondering why, after kneeling on the ground for a few minutes, Ran had suddenly changed the way she addressed her. Ran got up and Koizumi followed her. Koizumi Sensei has appeared as her high school herself in this place. My brain was wiped clean of all her memories about her, without any incongruity de detected. Abuki, how'd you fall all the way down there? This memory is engraved so deeply. I'm certain that it actually happened. Sai waved at them from the top of the cliff. I haven't lost my memories. Rather, someone must have stolen them from me. Ran looked at Sai and didn't answer her. Then, is it the same of the other students as well? 
Do I have to reclaim my memories of each of them too, one by one? If so, then where are Miss Sakura's memories hidden? Ran took a deep breath. She felt like she was approaching the true nature of this school. But it was far from enough. Whoa, okay, that's interesting. Um, we are going to continue this next time on Borderline Games. I wonder what that means. So maybe uh, Ran does know every single student for other reasons. And this is just a, a world where they're kind of reimagined as a actual school student. Because I'm guessing that Ranabuki herself now actually isn't a school student. Interesting. Uh, some uh, lore, I guess you'd call it. What nice music. Well... I will see you all next time on Borderline Games. Thank you so much, uh, so much for watching. Have a good evening. And uh, I'll see you next time for some more Chrono Jotter. Bye-bye for now. Bye!